an English village. It is 11 o'clock in the morning. As the hunt gathers in the courtyard, Mr. Lewis, the landlord, caps the preparation of the traditional beverage with gratings of nutmeg. Would you like to taste Welcome. my punch? Here, yes, I would indeed. I'd love to try it. Absolutely marvellous. Super, sir, sir. Now, may I ask the rest of the field to my pleasure, have a sir. glass of punch with you? It is thank, a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Into the 17th century silver bowl was added slices of lemon, hot ginger cordial, a bottle of port, Demerara sugar, cinnamon essence, powdered ginger, and nutmeg, and then more nutmeg. Whoa! <laughs> Bit spicy, that. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Spicy wine or ale was a traveller's drink going back a long way. 600 years ago, Geoffrey Chaucer, no less, extolled its virtues. He wrote, Green ginger plants and licorice pale, and cloves their sweetness offer, with nutmeg too to put in ale, no matter whether fresh or stale, or else to keep in coffer. The mother of nutmeg the remote island of Banda, now part of modern Indonesia. The first Europeans to come searching for the spice were the Portuguese. Then came the Dutch, who left these colonial artifacts. Banda became the first acquisition in what was to be a great Dutch empire. In 1621, when the islanders revolted, the Dutch killed or exiled the lot. They destroyed a whole people to gain a world monopoly in nutmeg. Tamesa, Arab, Rus, Tina, Tina, Ima, Soon. Today's Bandanese are the descendants of pressed labourers brought to the island to harvest the spice. They still follow colonial regulations. <laughs> Harvesting methods have remained unchanged since before the arrival of the Europeans. Nutmegs are the peach-like fruit captured at the end of long poles in these basket contraptions. When the fruit's fleshy outer layer is cut away, the crimson aril, or seed cover, is revealed. The outer flesh is sometimes saved to make jellies or sweets, but here it is discarded. The nutmeg is one of nature's most impressive packaging jobs. Nutmeg boasts the beautiful botanical name, Myristica fragrance. There are both male and female trees, and since one male can fertilize ten females, the spice has been called the Pasha of tropical flora. Most of all, nutmeg is not one, but two separate spices.
The crimson arils are removed from the nuts and collected in separate piles. The nuts are put into groups of ten to determine that day's pay. The arils are taken out and dried in the sun for only two or three hours. They soon turn dull and orangey in colour and become brittle. These are blades of the somewhat exotic spice, mace. And the nuts themselves are fire dried and stored. The essential oils, which give nutmegs their characteristic aroma, evaporate easily. But so long as the nuts remain in their shells, they can be stored without loss of potency. Wooden mallets are used to smash the nuts' hard outer casings. Inside, of course, familiar to all and ready to use, are the nutmegs of commerce. As the hunt tramples the countryside, someone has to prepare lunch. All right, Michelle, that's fine. Do you want me to, to look at the oysters? Yeah. If you're going... Why don't you do that? And I'll get the paste, the uh, ah, done. This is the start of a traditional British repast. Once, these oysters were the food of the poor and available everywhere in the land. Today, their purchase somewhat lightens the pocket. Flour and pepper are other ingredients for a steak, kidney and oyster pie. Grated nutmeg is the seasoning. All right, there we are. Mm, it does smell good, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Yes, it does smell good. But surprisingly, nutmeg's great affinity with beef results from the spice's rather bitter taste. Scientists have isolated the bitter agent and called it miristicin. Somehow, it rounds out the flavor of meat. Steak and kidney pie with oysters was a particular passion in England's north. The name pie comes from magpie because of the hodgepodge of items usually found in that bird's nest. This raised version was a practical way of eating cold meat with gravy before the invention of the fork. Thank you. Beef stock will form a hot, rich gravy as the pie cooks. Some of the English are fanatics about hunting, but all of the English are fanatics about puddings. Hundreds of different puddings are cooked throughout the land. For this one, grated lemon joins crushed almonds, raisins, sugar and cheese curds. The lemon is for bitterness. Like nutmeg, the lemon was a mark of civility. An 18th century churchman wrote, my living in Yorkshire was so far out of the way that it was actually 12 miles from a lemon. Now, of course, the nutmeg. What a versatile spice. It enhances both savoury and sweet dishes. 
Until a few centuries ago, sweet, sour and savoury were cooked all together in the same pot. Nutmeg, along with cinnamon, is a spice which binds diverse tastes into a coherent whole. Here, the nutmeg acts as a bridge between the sourness of the lemon and cheese and the sweetness of the sugar and raisins. Lemon nutmeg tart, simple and delicious. Now, while you watch the final garnish of lemon peel, here's a rather sad statistic. Of all the nutmeg used in the world, only 2% is grated from the whole nuts. Mostly, it is used as a powder or an essential oil. Nature went to such lengths to lock in the flavour it's a shame, because grating nutmeg is not terribly difficult, is it? In 1877, the food journalist Kettner wrote, there was scarcely a dish in the olden time which was not flavoured with nutmeg. It has been so ridiculed, we have now gone to the other extreme, and it is rarely, if ever, used except for sweet dishes. Gosh, this is a delicious pie. <laughs> have, have that. Thank you. No doubt it has already recovered some of its lost flavour. No, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I think it's for you. Put a drop of that for you. When nutmeg was popular, <laughs> there was a danger which led both to its abandonment no, and abuse. <laughs> people believed that nutmeg caused miscarriages. And you know, some people even believe that today. The main street of every French town offers a charcuterie. Here in Meximieux, near Lyon, it's charcuterie mazola. The word derives from the old French char and cuit, meaning cooked meat. Pork is preferred, and no part of the pig is ignored. Nutmeg is the charcuterie spice. Used on its own, or more often as part of the quatre épices mixture with cloves, cinnamon and pepper, it is in everything. Pâtés, terrines, galantines and sausages. The French, who do know about food, feel no compunction at using the charcuterie as a takeaway. But then this is not fast food. No ingredients are compromised or corners cut. Just admire this pâté. Back in the kitchen is the genius himself, Monsieur Mazola. His repertoire goes far beyond cold meats and patties. Here, he prepares his own version of yet another French classic. Half a dozen eggs are already in the bowl. Instead of using nutmeg, Monsieur Mazola prefers mace for this recipe, in its ground form. Some chefs feel that mace is the more refined of the spices and better complements delicate ingredients like this rich, fresh cream. You will, of course, remember that nutmeg and mace come from the same fruit. Well, once, under the old Dutch colonial regime, the price of mace in Amsterdam was double that of nutmeg. And the story goes, according to Monsieur Mazola, that an eager Dutch bureaucrat sent an order to the colonies to grow less nutmeg and more mace. Awaiting in the pastry shells are a combination of Gruyere cheese and a type of cured and spiced pork belly called Petit Salé. These tarts will be baked for just over 20 minutes. The oven must not be too hot or they will curdle. When the custard is set and the top brown, they will be quiche. But they will not be sold in the shop. They will be enjoyed elsewhere, 
along with a dazzling display of culinary delicacies already prepared. Hostellerie du Vieux Pirouge, a restaurant in Pirouge, a town not far from Mexico. Bon, je vais, tu vois, je vais d'abord délayer ma farine dans le beurre fondu. Le patron, Monsieur Thibault, relies upon Monsieur Mazola for the courses before the main one. This frees Monsieur Thibault to concentrate on his own fine sources. Here, hot milk is poured into a mixture of flour and melted butter. Elle catonne pas, elle est bien limpide, alors je vais la parfumer avec la noix muscade que je vais remplir. Nutmeg transforms the ingredients into the grandfather of white sauces, béchamel. On va goûter si ça s'est assaisonné. Ou si on en remet un peu. Non, c'est bien. As Monsieur Mazola, the charcutier, rushes to the assistance of Monsieur Thibault, the restaurateur, it is interesting to note where the world's nutmeg supply goes. People consume over two-thirds of it in such manufactured food as sauces, chutneys, pickles, frankfurters and bologna. Naturally, Monsieur Mazola will have none of that. He's made everything himself for Monsieur Thibault. Of course, the true beneficiaries of this uniquely French division of labor are sitting right here. And remember how the Dutch captured the island of Banda and all the world's nutmeg? Well, the adventurer who stole the spice and gave it to the world was Pierre Poivre, a Frenchman, naturally. And five and ten. 15 and 20, 5 and 30, 5 and 40, 5 and 50, 5, 155 at the table now. Selms. Here in London, at the famous auctioneer's Sotheby's, is a rather unusual event. In times past, nutmegs were precious, but here is a case of the box outrunning the boxed. A sale of antique nutmeg graters. At 190. 210, 220, at 220 pounds. Selling. Corsico, lot 160, 300 pounds is bid for this grater, at 300, and 20, 340, 360, 380, 420, 450, 480. It is yours at 480 pounds, 500 now. Against you, madam, 520, 550, 580. Ladies' bid, 580 pounds. 580, 620. 620 pounds. Ladies' bid, selling. Nutmeg, of all the Eastern spices, was the last to reach the West. But along its way, in every civilization it touched, India, Persia, Arabia, it became regarded as a cure-all and a wonder drug. In the 18th century, this idea hit Western Europe. People carried the nuts everywhere in compartments in these lovely graters. They used them profusely. But by the 19th century, the idea of nutmeg, the wonder spice, was over. On the island of Jamaica, nutmeg grows almost wild. But the spice has only been known in the West Indies for just over a hundred years. That is when it first arrived on the neighboring island of Grenada, now called the Nutmeg Isle. 
And shortly thereafter, the British brought it here to Jamaica. Of course, that's not all the British brought. They also gave to Jamaica the sport of polo. This game is likely the oldest in the world. It was played by the various peoples of Central Asia from Mongolia to Persia. And it is a fact of absolutely no significance at all that the Persian emperors, who were masters of the sport, assumed for themselves the title the son of glory and the nutmeg of delight. Yes, it was the British who learned the game in northern India and brought it here along with certain more liquid traditions. A polo match consists of eight chuckers of seven and a half minutes each. There are intervals of three minutes between chuckers and five minutes at half time. Now, only I and the mathematical geniuses amongst you know that this adds up to one hour and 23 minutes. Mr. Edgar began preparing his punch at the start of the match to be completed at the end. Of all the ingredients, only the pineapple juice looks harmless, and that is including the nutmeg. chemical meristocin, if taken in massive doses, has been known to be the cause of hallucinations. Ah, but rest assured, if there are any such effects from this punch, it will not be on account of nutmeg. There's lots of float out there today. Oh, you, know, you should have been with me. Coming I shouldn't float. I should have been coming up the runway. This, believe it or not, is a fly in breakfast at the town of Kamloops in the Canadian Rockies. This get together, Rocky Mountain style, is simply to fly and talk aeroplanes and eat hamburgers, seasoned with salt, pepper. And yes, you've guessed it, nutmeg. Just one final word. The great French gastronome, Kononsky, once said about nutmeg, anyone who has tasted this spice no longer desires others, just as anyone who has made love with a Chinese woman no longer desires to make love with another woman. Nutmeg, you have come a long way from Banda. <laughs> <laughs>